Hey everyone, this is Martin How to Make Mobile Games again. And this is a quick video on texture optimization for 2D games inside of Unity. It's pretty much an intermediate tutorial, this one, or a tips video. It's not really for beginners and probably not for the advanced developers out there who already know this stuff. Uh, it might help a little bit though in case you're looking into 2D games inside of Unity and maybe want some tips or you're having some problem with texture optimization. So, um, you know, hopefully this video is useful for everyone. Uh, as you can see today though, no hat. I usually have a hat on all of these videos, but you can tell why. My hair is completely messy and I tried to make it a little bit more pretty before I came into this video, but it just wasn't working, so let's, let's just go for it. So anyway, um, I get this question um, uh, quite a lot, is, is texture optimization inside of Unity? And I also see the question um, quite a lot as well. So basically what we do with our business, um, uh, our studio, Cobalt Play, is we make 2D games. And obviously Unity, for those of you who are quite new, it builds inside of a 3D environment. The, the game scenes are actually laid out in, into a 3D world in, in all axes. But what we do is we change our camera to orthographic so that there's no perspective or distance. So that's pretty much for all of our games. So this is very much a 2D game focused texture optimization video. So let's dive in anyway. Uh, the first thing is, um, uh, you know, keeping textures down in terms of their size is, is useful for like two main reasons. Uh, one is obviously the frame rate, which you know makes the game more smooth. So if, if we can achieve like a 50 frames per second or even 60 frames per second on, say, an iPhone, then that's great. You know we want to keep it nice and smooth, and we don't want to uh, have it too jittery. Or you know if we achieve 30 frames per second, that's great as well. Uh, so having compressed textures that are a smaller size basically makes it easier for the screen to render. Uh, there's less memory overhead and therefore it appears smoother. The second thing is that the textures themselves are are smaller in terms of their size so you're not importing a texture which is two megabytes large you're only importing one that's 32 kilobytes large instead and so that keeps the size of the application down and therefore players are likely to download it faster or if it's on iPhone below 20 megabytes means that they can download it over their 3G network as opposed to needing a Wi-Fi connection. So that's really the main the main reasons. Um, inside of Unity, so you know, uh, the first point I want to make is that if you build if you build textures inside of Photoshop, it doesn't matter how big those textures are. You can make them you know um, twenty forty eight by twenty forty eight if you want, and then inside of Unity it will it will squash them down. You probably want to make them just only a little, one magnitude bigger inside of Photoshop because. For example, if you've got like a tiny, a tiny, um, uh, a tiny texture like we've got here, like this is quite small. This, this, uh, this is the icon for our game, Chicks Revenge. This is quite small. So if I was to build this super size and like 4096 inside of Photoshop, what would happen in Unity is I would put the settings to say 64 by 64, and that would shrink it down. But the problem is when that happens, uh, the I think the anti-aliasing doesn't isn't as efficient as it is in Photoshop. So if I want the texture to be around this size in the game, it's going to be 128 by 128. I'll probably build the texture um, 512 by 512 at max. I won't make it super large, just so that the the compression side of Unity is um, it, it's a little bit better when it's when you're compressing to a size that is closer to the original authored size. If you don't want to do that, just make the original size inside of Photoshop, like say 10 1024 by 1024. And then just make it smaller inside of Photoshop first, and then that that makes a nice a nicer anti aliasing effect from what I've seen inside of our games. So that's the first point. Don't worry about the size of the Photoshop file; it doesn't matter because when you import it, it will be smaller in size of Un inside of Unity. Um, the second thing is um, so this one here. What I usually do when I make a texture is I've just got an example here for our, uh, our Chicks Revenge icon. Is basically what we do is. I go on to the, I find the texture myself inside of the project uh, folder here. Then what I'll do is I'll set the wrap mode to clamp. And that what that does is that basically means that the texture can't be repeated. What you might see in some of your textures sometimes, if you put the texture onto an exact square, um, what you might see is the texture leaking from one side. So for example, if I've got a texture here, and let's say I've got to, at the bottom, the texture is filled all the way to the bottom and at the top there's a bit of a gap between the texture which is transparent. Sometimes you might see the top of the texture have a small line 
Uh, and that's it kind of leaking on or bleeding, I think it's called. I, I can't remember the term in, in texturing. I'm, I'm not an artist, but it kind of bleeds onto the top. So one of the ways to reduce that is obviously move the texture up, up inside of Photoshop so that there's a gap on every side so that it doesn't the texture itself doesn't touch the side of the of the edge of the texture. But if you do see that problem and want a kind of quick fix that might help a little bit is go to clamp, wrap mode clamp. Okay. So the next thing is when I choose my settings, I go to advanced and I do this myself. Uh, I choose to not generate mip maps. Okay, this uh, basically inside of Unity what happens is a mipmap is it helps to reduce the the size of textures that are being rendered onto the screen at one time so if a tree for example you have a tree texture and that texture is five miles away in the distance in your game scene you don't want to render the full detailed texture because the player would never see that kind of detail anyway even on, a, on a, even if it's on a big HD screen so basically, mipmaps allows it to to uh, render just a very basic version of that texture, you know, with, which doesn't have a lot of detail, and therefore the, mem and then the for the memory overhead, the amount of detail that needs to be drawn each frame is less. Okay. Um, now in a two D game, I don't really need to do that in in the six in our games because we don't have many textures rendered anyway. Our games are quite simple, and they don't they're usually single scenes that don't have a lot of memory overhead in terms of the texture size okay but I just want to illustrate this point here so right now there's no um, uh, let me just apply that one second so right now there is no um, mip maps on this particular texture here I believe yeah so it's no mip maps so if I generate mip maps what you'll do what you'll see is right now it's 8 kilobytes okay if I apply that it's going to be a little bit larger 10.8 now that's not very big that's that's no problem but what you can see has happened here is the texture has actually gone fuzzy. Now that's because it is it is showing a uh, a version of the texture which is lower detail in order to reduce the the amount of detail that needs to be rendered each frame, and therefore making the scene a little bit more efficient. But the problem is it now looks fuzzy. Okay, and uh, it also depends on size. So if I scale this up slightly, you can see there it just popped and it looks a little bit more detailed. If I go down slightly, there you see, hopefully you can see this on the screen, it pops into the other mip map. Um, and then if I do it again, there we go. So that, that's pretty fuzzy down there, you know, it's not very clear at all. Uh, that one's okay, but if I go here, that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the mip map. So it's going to save me a little bit of uh, texture memory, it's going to reduce the file size slightly. And for our games, especially 2D, that don't have a lot of detail, a lot of textures, it doesn't really matter. So I can turn off mipmaps, click apply, and if you see here, the detail is back to a high quality. Okay. The other thing that I do is I don't touch any of these settings here because these ones are these ones we don't need. Normal maps we don't need. We're, we're just rendering flat textures without any kind of lighting in the scene. Uh, again, it's on a mobile device, so using lighting, I think generally. Uh, causes a bit of uh, what I found is it causes a bit of a memory crunch and it's a bit hard to render. I, I like to keep it at a maximum frames possible per second, so 50 to 60. The other thing I do is turn on override for iPhone, and what I will then do is I will play around with these settings here. I try not to go above 256 if possible, so 128, and I generally try to keep the uh, compression size down to 4 bits or 2 bits, and I'll play around. Now for this one, as you can see, I've gone to four bits here, and I'll click, uh, and I've already got that one. But if I try two bits, click apply. Now you can see that's kind of looking a little bit fuzzy there. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, I'll make it a little bit larger so that you can, you can see it there. Now obviously it wouldn't be this large in the game, but just to illustrate the example. So let me turn up to four bits. Yeah, that's a lot better. 8 kilobyte, and if I turn it on to 16 bits, that's going to make the file size bigger, 32k, but the detail is pretty good there. Um, so definitely play around with these two settings here and try to stick to 2 and 4 bits. If it's not in a main game scene that, that has a lot of action on the screen, then I might res this up to 16 bit, that's okay, and I might make this a bit larger as well if I need to. That's not a major problem because if, if the game scene needs to the game scene needs to be smooth, obviously the main game where you're actually playing it, you don't want that to, to jitter and you want to keep a smooth frame rate. But for scenes like say in the menu or you know the, the, uh, the instruction screen or something like this or the credit screen then it's not too much of a problem and if you don't mind the extra file size 
then you can crank this up a little bit and you won't have too much of a performance hit on the game. The frames won't drop too low. Okay. Um, so the other point is this is, um, I'm just going to, sorry, let me just double check my, my notes here. Okay, so we did the texture type, we set that to advanced, we, turn, we talked about generate bit maps, try to use 2 and 4 bit compression. Yeah, so the other point that I wanted to mention here as well is that depending on how the texture was created inside of, say, Photoshop or any other um, uh, texture creation program that you're using, uh, it depends on how the texture is actually created as well. So, for example, this one, this texture, uh, our, our, our uh, studio logo, Cobalt Play, that texture inside of Unity, inside of Photoshop itself, is actually created as a thin texture. It's not created as a square texture. Um, so, what will happen here is, if I go to the texture itself, now I've set this onto clamp, I've turned off the mitt maps, uh, I've turned it onto a 256 size and I've also set it to compression or 4 uh, bit compression. Um, what will, I think what happens inside of Unity is if you have a non square texture, the compression is slightly different. Okay, So, what I can do here, and, and this is why I say play around with the settings, is if I go to 16 bit, it's now on 32, it's a 32 kilobit size texture inside of uh, Unity, uh, 4 bits. If I change to 16 bit, it's still 32 and the quality is increased. So, and if that, I believe that is because it's not a square texture, it chain, the compression is slightly different. Um, it doesn't compress it in the same way as, a, as an exact square texture. But, so with that in mind, if you do need sort of higher quality and you've got a non-square texture, you can set that to 16 bits and it will look better, but the file size will still be the same, okay? So, I'm just going to leave that as it is right now and that should be fine for this one. So, I think that is pretty much it. Um, Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the other point that I wanted to mention, and I'd, uh, this was one of the questions that, that somebody had asked me as well, is uh, on iPhone, when, uh, when it actually builds the app file, uh, the, the .app file, everything gets shrunk down and compressed um, when the app file is created through Xcode. So, for example, um, if you, I believe if you generate a, uh, an app file, a .app file that is around... 28 megabytes or 27 megabytes when you zip that up it will go down to around 9 kilobytes now this is working on a Mac here I don't know if it's any different on Windows in fact it wouldn't be different on Windows because you need a Mac to make iPhone so ignore what I just said anyway if you zip a, a 28 megabyte .app file down it comes to around maybe 9 or 10 megabytes but when it comes into iTunes when it's available on the iPhone App Store it actually jumps from around 10 megabytes to around 19.9. Now, I'll double check that for anyone. If anybody's interested in knowing exactly what file size you need to have your finished app file in order to be below the 20 megabytes, then please drop me a comment um, and I can reply to that in, in a video which actually talks about that specifically because I want to give you guys the right figures, not, not just ones that I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. So, um, but for now, guys, you know, I hope, I hope this video was useful. Um, intermediate users and hopefully some advanced users have found this, uh, this useful. And, and when you're building 2D games, we'll take this into account. Uh, you know, but as always, guys, please subscribe. Uh, please comment and like the video. Uh, drop any comments down of the videos that you'd like me to talk about, any tutorials, and we'll add those to our channel uh, because we really want the community to sort of dictate like, and tell us what you want to see as opposed to us sort of guessing. But for now, anyway, this is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games, and happy developing, everyone.